Hello Army of Light, Earth Division, Shauna L. Francis. Today is March 20th, 2023. Welcome to the Spring Equinox. It happened today at 2.24 my time, 2.24 p.m. And I happened to be um, channeling Queen Elizabeth at that time. Uh, some interesting stuff happened today with the channeling. Welcome everybody. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to this video. Thank you so much for watching. Um, yeah, so again, today, more what seems to be something going on with the connection. I'm not really sure. I was able to connect as normal with Melchizedek. They asked how I was doing, and I had expressed some things that were on my mind, and they gave me some advice. And I think I'll go ahead and try to work through that with all of you in case it's helpful for you. And then um, I had gotten to a question, and they kind of quit talking, and then they said, are you ready for Queen Elizabeth? I said, yes. Um, so she came in right away and I don't know you guys, I think I spent maybe a half an hour with Queen Elizabeth and then it just went quiet again and I was getting a really bad headache at the time and I was praying to White Snow to please help help get rid of the headache, which, which it went away, she helped me. But it was a really weird time and I gave it about an hour and a half and then I called it quits, had some dinner, sat back down tonight to try to reconnect and finish up the channeling with Queen Elizabeth and Racer came in just again, like really, it's like really quiet. We were, we're dealing with a bit of something here. Everything's under control, but let's, they, he said, go ahead and make your video and we'll talk with you again tomorrow. I'm like, okay. So we're still not really voicing really loud. So sometimes I'm saying things out loud, louder, intentions out loud, and I have to catch myself, or I'm speech to text or whatever that is, and I'm saying things that maybe I shouldn't be voicing. But here I am making this video and I'm going to voice all this stuff, so I'm not still really not sure how that's all working. Um, it is the spring equinox. This is supposedly a pretty big deal. Um, today, a lot of channelers, a lot of spiritual folks are talking about today, this week, March in general. Yeah, I think with all this interference and, and such, there's something that's maybe tied to planetary astrological alignments. I don't know much about any of that good stuff. Um, but yeah, so interesting. I don't know if I'd call it interference, but it seems like they're dealing with something. It didn't feel like interference like that. It felt like they needed to go take care of something else. That was uh, my impression. I hope to know more tomorrow, and certainly, guys, I'll keep you posted. I'm really not worried, and Racer said, please don't worry about this. We've got this under control. I'm like, okay, you know, and certainly whatever happened last time, they were able to fix that, and uh, it's been wonderful last few days. Thanks everybody for all your beautiful comments on the MH370 video. I was nervous putting that video out, um, but <laughs> I have to trust the information and it's no coincidence that that all came up um, and, you know, Netflix and seeing that and watching it, asking for help. And then, oh, by the way, it is, you know, according to Melchizedek, negative reptilian based. All right, so everything, all the synchronicity, right? Um, hello, hello. Um, let's see here. They, it was Melchizedek and they said, how are you? And, you know, honestly, team, I think I was reflecting on, you know, those thoughts, the mind control thoughts, you know, the thoughts that most everybody has had in their lifetime that Queen Elizabeth was explaining yesterday about, um, you know, low vibration thoughts that keep us separate from each other, that keep us feeling bad about ourselves, that keep us um, in judgment of others, you know, this us versus them and, you know, needing to feel special or powerful or in the know or something versus, you know, more inclusivity, um, unconditional love, non-judgment. Um, anyway, I, I've, I've had some things come up when I've been kind of pondering those things. So I kind of talked to Melchizedek about that a little bit. I said, well, you know, I'm, I've got a bit of a headache coming on. I said, I'm feeling a little groggy. Oh, and that's another thing. The grogginess seems to be back the last, well, today really, um, feeling better tonight, but definitely feeling a little tired. And maybe it's the new schedule that I'm keeping. Um, it's been good. I've, I've enjoyed it. So I said, I'm a little groggy. I said, I'm thinking about, you know, some 
personal, like, interpersonal exchanges with other people, things really out of my past, um, some of it ancient history. Uh, but, you know, I said I, I'm analyzing some of the things that I'm thinking about and, you know, how, how we or how I deal with other people. You know, how, how do I be in the upper room, as Melchizedek likes to talk about, um, especially through Paul Selig and all of his books? You know, how do we operate from the upper room at all times? I really take this to heart. Oh, in fact, <laughs> one thing I'll show you. This was a this was a um, postcard that they gave that Paul Selig gave away at one of the in-person workshops that I went to with him in Seattle a couple few years ago. Uh, see if there's sometime in 2019, I think. That must have been post-COVID. I'm not sure. Anyway student of the guides that's me how do i be in the upper room at all times you know and then i've also i've i also have this mantra that i read a while back that really resonated for me and it was speak your truth with gentleness and love because i have always tended to be especially before my awakening have a pretty closed throat chakra and i learned through my dad's behavior early on that you want to just always keep the peace. You want to not get involved with drama. You want to take the high road always. Um, I had always really taken that to heart and put my feelings aside. Even if something bothers me, I would just dismiss it and say, that's no big deal. It's not worth, you know, possibly hurting this other person's feelings or they're not going to get it or my feelings really, you know, I'm, I'm tougher than that. I don't need to let this bother me kind of thing. And I... Um, and a lot of times also I would just walk away from situations that weren't working for me or people that weren't working for me in my past. And it <laughs> almost always walking away never seems to fix the issue. Things come back and it's still kind of the issue still there. So it's kind of bizarre. Um, so it's really not working to ignore things or hope that it resolves itself on its own or with time it just for at least in my case doesn't seem to be that way so it's like how do i if i've got if there's something interpersonal going on with another person in my world how do i react to that situation what do i say how do i speak my gentleness with with truth and love how do i speak my truth with gentleness and love you know it's this kind of thing and so i asked melchizedek about this and <laughs> He said, Shauna, you are learning. You have a good handle on this game. You know what they are in truth. You know who they are in truth. You know how they serve in truth. This is really all that matters, they said. This knowing releases you from any fear around their behavior. Any fear around their behavior. It allows for acceptance, they said, It'll, and allowance and honoring and honoring so your truth as you stated is in speaking your truth with as in speaking your truth with gentleness and love is really just an expression of your fears fears you are trying to honor and understand and feel the need for others to honor and understand <laughs> i had never thought about it this way it, these are my fears um i did go to a spiritual gathering here locally in the portland area on saturday which was really quite lovely to be meeting folks in person and i really really hope to be doing more of this with all of you um hopefully even this year we'll see how it goes but um she talked the, per the person running it talked a lot about being triggered what in if I if I have it having an issue with somebody else, what is it about that other person that's triggering something within me that I can't accept or I don't want to see? And, you know, it's that mirror idea. And I do believe that that's very much truth and real. Everything being a mirror, watching what we project onto others, you know, everything's really an internal reflection of us, not that other person. What, what, what about that person's behavior, what they've said, what they're doing, their thoughts, their belief systems is triggering me? What about me? Okay. And Melchizedek here, this is you having a fear about that other person that you want to express or that you're trying to come to grips with and understand. And you're hoping that they will honor and understand this. <laughs> okay. And they said, but at the end of the day, you are you 
they are they and you and they are not the same people you bring you all bring your own perspectives and it's about honoring everyone's truth whether or not it is in alignment with your truth they said speak about it all you wish but hold yourself accountable to your truth not them so i we want to avoid their saying holding other people accountable for our truths. We need to hold ourselves accountable for our truths, not push that onto somebody else. Believe me, guys, I'm going to need to really work through this and see how I can apply it in, re in my real life here at this 3D level, trying to apply the upper room thinking to some of this. Um, so I'm, I'm still very much learning. But that, that made sense to me. Offering that deeper part of me that's in fear to another person and really they can take it or leave it But I I think that in and of itself is going to be a beautiful thing to experiment with Here's my truth of how I'm feeling or here's what fear I have about what you're doing or the trigger here inside me Because really they're okay. They're doing their thing. They're doing the best that they know how to do at the level of vibration they're at, at their level of awareness with whatever they've got going on. People are just basically doing the best that they know how. And always we're going to be, you know, have, having a difference of opinion, a difference of belief systems. Of course, we're each unique, beautiful, you know, individuals here. Even though we all are one, we all bring our unique perspectives here. We have our unique lessons, our unique viewpoints, our unique history. You know, so, you know, this is the ego, the personality side of us. And it is an important part of what we're doing down here. Anyway, um, they said, yes, Shawnee, you are getting this. We all bring our fears to any, any interaction, subconsciously or consciously, hopefully more consciously with every passing day, being in that knowing, being in choice, seeing it for what it is not projecting, not protecting. I said, thank you for that Melchizedek. <laughs> okay, so maybe that will help. So, and then I'd switched gears and I wanted to ask Melchizedek about the tinnitus, the ringing in the ears. So yesterday I made a video and, ee, you know, I started hearing that high tone. And I think one of you had asked, I think I create for you had asked, what is this? So I, I had asked the questions and it kind of went quiet. And then they just came in and said, are you ready to talk to Queen Elizabeth? I said, yes, I am. All right. All right, so we'll switch gears to what the Queen had to say today. It's not everything she wanted to talk about, but I'll give you what she said and, you know, we'll pick this up tomorrow, I assume. All right. She says here, as a member of the royal monarchy, it was often my role to be an example of honor of dignity, of poise, strength under pressure, never a crack in the armor, she said, calm, collected, decisive, and confident. Shauna, she said, this is also quite an accurate description for anyone under the negative reptilian hive mind control system. Cool, collected, confident, poised, decisive, Everything completely under control, at least, this is always the facade that is fostered and nurtured, no matter what era or which family. Outward appearances are paramount to maintaining the illusion of grandeur, perfection, entitlement. She said, of course, now, with the disclosure that has come as a result of Prince Harry's and even Meghan's, newfound freedom of, freedom of expression, you get a peek behind the big curtain, off stage, behind closed doors. Yes, this is all from Harry's point of view in terms of his book and his interviews, but nonetheless, it is his truth, his observations, and his messages are worthy of consideration. She said, as mentioned previously, the cracks on the facade grow wider and wider every day. This monarchy is under extreme pressure. What is this pressure exactly? What is the crux of the issue, she said? The pressure of trying to contain a slow explosion of exposure 
of the innermost sacred workings of a family, a bloodline that is no longer in step with an ascending world. This slow exposure, slow explosion of exposure, it includes what we're doing, what other channels are doing, what other whistleblowers are doing, what Harry and Meghan are doing. Again, Melchizedek had talked about this chorus of voices, this chorus all singing the same tune, getting in alignment here with these messages, bringing this all to the surface. It's very exciting. No longer, she said, will this monarchy be able to do only what it has done in the past with myself as Queen Elizabeth at the helm and even long before I took the throne. The negative reptilian regime relies heavily on tradition, rules, hierarchy, control of the narrative, control of outward appearances. The stoicism of yesterday will be seen as shallow and meaningless in today's evolving world. Actions, action, she said, real policy changes that actually support people, support communities, support the planet will become much more important than this pomp and circumstance that they've relied upon in the past. Hollow, shallow, meaningless. She just does not mince words here. It's so interesting, her coming right out of 70, 70 years on the throne. 70 years, you guys. Every day, every day, every day. I'd read something that at 91 years old, she did something like 253 events, public events, things that she's supposed to do at 91. And we know, you know, we have a basic idea of how that's even possible with the ADR pills and, and of course, this influence and whatever else they're doing, you know, that we've talked about. Hollow, hollow, shallow, and meaningless, she said. Shauna, she said, the disclosure campaign we've embarked upon will give a framework, a voice to the growing tide of discontent with the status quo. We are seeding the collective now. These seeds will grow with the nurturing love of higher vibrational frequencies and with choices made from a higher perspective. Shauna, the stand we all collectively take today will help be the catalyst for real change. Change that is ultimately in support of the larger framework of ascension. All is framed by the ascension, she said. Okay, so there was a bit of a pause and I'm hearing just a moment. I'm like, okay. And then I heard kind of, well, I'm working with Melchizedek on where, how I want to pivot here. I'm like, okay. And I just checked in and checked in. And before I knew it, 90 minutes had gone by. And finally I called it quits. And like I said, went back excuse me, tried to reconnect. And that's when Racer came in and said, we're working some stuff, make your video, we'll connect again tomorrow. All right, so that's where we're at today. All right, so, so much going on, it feels like energetically. I hope everybody's doing well with all this. We are, we're on the surfboard, riding that wave up high, trying that, not to get pummeled by the waves, but ride up here best we can. All right, team. All right. I love you. I shall see you all tomorrow. Take care of yourselves. Okay. Bye. Mwah.